Look, 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 Rasheed Rice, I love you. It's going to take more than a couple Domino's pizzas to repair agree. your public figure. But tell part. me another okay. person who's done something bad, and then you know what? Let me just go put my face in public doing something good. I don't think we've seen that. Hey, just <laughs> give me some Papa John's pizza. You want some Papa John's? Kill, all right? You, you broke the law? Yeah. Where's the pizza at? Top 25, under 25, some cornerstone wide receivers yes, that you should be building around. For your dynasty football team, we're going to be breaking it down into tiers, okay? Mm. Zach, have a lot of conversations here. Take us to your first yes. tier. This is the, the creme de la creme of mm -hmm. building a dynasty team. You want all the superstar young wide receivers. It's what we all drool over, but let's start with tier one, okay? Okay. Justin Jefferson just got the big contract extension. Jamar Chase shouldn't be far after him at some point in the next year, and then Amon Ross St. Brown as well. Sure. I think he's deserving of being in this tier, and I finally kind of decided, you know what? Enough is enough. The contract is there. We shouldn't be worrying about anything with Amon Ross St. Brown anymore. Okay. And we should putting be putting some respect on his name. I mean, 164 targets last year, over 20 points per game. And then Phenomenal. signs a huge extension to yeah. stay with the quarterback who, again, Jared Goff signs another extension. So I think he's deserving of being in this top tier. Um, and by the way, CeeDee Lamb not in this tier. Why? Because CeeDee Lamb is now over the age of 25. All right. So there will be a lot of names that we're, we're all kind of getting a little bit of a shock. Because we're like, oh, my God, are, am I getting that old? That player's yeah, over I, 25 now? Old? Gosh. <laughs> like, CeeDee Lamb is over 25 at this point. Uh, Jalen Waddle is over 25. Devonta Smith, Nico Collins, T. Higgins. All these names are now over 25, so you won't see them um, in this video. But that's my, my tier one for the under 25 wide receivers. Yeah, let's start off here. I think the biggest conversation... I believe in these cornerstone wide receiver rankings. Now, I think I believe in the talent, but I think there's a lot of conversation around Justin Jefferson in this quarterback play. It may be a bit early to even have it already. We've seen it kind of that reflected in the redraft perspective where his yeah. points per game is going to be lower. I, I know you have him projected as in redraft specifically, you know, 17.9, if I'm not mistaken, or 18 points, something I completely forgot what that yeah, was. Yeah, around 18 points per game is what I have him projected. Uh, yeah, so. If that is going to be something that's consistent, hypothetically, yeah. surely he is going to be falling here in the next couple of years if J.J. McCarthy is not the guy. Obviously, we believe his quarterback proof, but I guess my question is, would, it, would you be surprised next year if he falls into your tier two? No, I know that's a big... I would be surprised, to be honest, um, mm -hmm. because, look, like... Jamar Chase is a, is a good example. I know Joe Burrow has been there, and that's been easier to see, like, the long-term gauge. But Jamar yeah. Chase hasn't scored over 20 points per game in the last couple of years. And we still know what he is capable of when quarterback play is there, when his quarterback isn't injured. Mm -hmm. So we know what what Justin Jefferson can do without good quarterback play. What if J.J. becomes a good quarterback? Sure. What if he he completely tanks? And sure. then, in, or then uh, Kevin O'Connell is like, well... We got to address this. Let's go actually get someone through free agency or whatever the case may be. So mm -hmm. I think Jefferson's done enough for us to not worry about him to the point where we're dropping him too far down. But you're right. Like, it is a reasonable question to to ask. We are – no one has him as a number one wide receiver in fantasy redraft leagues. So should there be some concern in Dynasty? Overall, I'd say no. That contract shows what he's worth to the team. Uh, and he's still someone who's going to see, you know, over 160 targets every year. We just don't know if they're going to be good targets or not. But yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a chance for sure he's not like in the conversation for the number one. I'm a little bit I concerned. I'm a little bit concerned that, and maybe this is not my negativity on JJ McCarthy or even Justin Jefferson. I'm a little bit concerned that it's going to be a Garrett Wilson type of thing, right? Okay. Oh, he doesn't have the quarterback. But you see what he's producing, but he still should be a top fantasy relevant quarter. Like, if Garrett Wilson hypothetically doesn't do it with Aaron Rodgers this year, he is going to plummet. And I think if we have, once again, projecting a lot in the future here, at least two consistent years where Justin Jefferson is not producing with, or at least to the likings that we hoped for, sure. with, with JJ McCarthy, then I think we can see him kind of where. Garrett Wilson's at right now, still respectable, but like 
we just believe in the talent now, you know? I definitely get where you're coming from. I think there are multiple factors at play, though. Sure, like, sure. With the Jets, you're talking about Zach Wilson. You're talking about oh, yeah, Daniel was, Hackett led terrible, offense. It like, was terrible, 100%. What Kevin O'Connell does to set up his offense, I think, can't be under-discussed because part of believing in Justin Jefferson long-term is part of believing in Kevin O'Connell. And there's a yeah. lot of history to tell us that that is a very good thing to do, whereas yeah. the opposite can be true when we talk about Nathaniel Hackett and his offenses that he's led. So I get where you're coming from, but there's a little more trust, I think, with the coaching no staff that I, that's been built up. Yeah. All right, take us to your tier two then. All right, second tier here. Um, Marvin Harrison Jr., okay. um, Puka Nakua, Garrett Wilson, and Malik Neighbors. That is my second tier. I have recently moved Garrett Wilson slightly ahead of Malik Neighbors. Um, I still think Neighbors is a better prospect, and I wouldn't be surprised if this mm-hmm. time next year we all have Neighbors over Garrett Wilson. Right. But when you start to get into deeper into the offseason, you're starting to get through your projections for the 2024 season. And you start to think, what would these projections do for dynasty rankings? I think it's, and it, it, it makes a lot of sense, but the closer you get to the season, I think the better your dynasty rankings become because you start to put in the hard work of actually projecting these players out. And thinking about Garrett Wilson, full season with Aaron Rodgers. Sure. Thinking about Malik Neighbors, a full season with Daniel Jones. I'm not scared to draft Neighbors in a redraft league, but obviously I think Garrett Wilson is more primed to finish as a top 10, top seven wide receiver in fantasy football this year. So I will put Garrett Wilson one spot ahead, even though I believe Neighbors is um, a better prospect overall. And a lot of people won't like me saying that. But that's the, you know, that's the the top seven, if you will. That's the tier two. Marvin, it's a lot of belief of what he could be. No question. Attached to Kyler Murray. Puka Nakua. The questions are, can he do it again? But uh, Matthew Stafford's still there. And I'm still believing in Puka. Look, I completely agree when it comes down to these guys, especially what you said about Malik Neighbors. You know, as you work out your rankings, you feel a little bit more confident in some of these players. And I think another thing when it comes down to cornerstone rankings, specifically like we're doing here today, is youth as well. Right. Martin Mm -hmm. Harrison Jr., 21 years old. Malik Neighbors, 20 years old. So I think that also plays a huge factor when it comes down to ranking some of these guys because you want the youth. A lot of people love to pivot into these younger players and get them for even longer periods of time, maybe going into their second contract or maybe into their second quarterback. If that if that quarterback, like, for example, Puka Nakua, is this year going to be Matthew Stafford last year or is it going to be next year? Who What's it going to look like with a new quarterback? So I completely sure. agree here with Tier 2. Don't have any um, arguments or conversations around these players. I think this is a perfect, perfect yeah. way. Um, but take us to your Tier 3 here. Tier 3 is one of the smaller tiers. Okay. Um, I wanted to distinguish these three names. They didn't make it quite into tier two, but I could see them making it at some point this year. Drake London, Chris Alave, and Rome Adunze. I think Drake London might actually deserve to be in tier two, but the issue is he has been in the league two years, yeah. and we haven't seen even like a top 30 points per game finish, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we believe this is the year. I think Drake London has as high of a ceiling you know, as Garrett Wilson and redraft leagues this year, I know that might be controversial to hear, but we still need to see Kirk Cousins play post Achilles tear. Mm-hmm. Same thing can be said actually with Garrett Wilson and Aaron Rodgers, but we've seen Garrett Wilson, you know, garner 150 plus targets on an offense. So it's a lot of projecting for Drake London. As far as Roma Dunze goes, you know, if there was no DJ Moore and Keenan Allen, it'd be easier to project him higher into this list, but it might be some weight i'm not saying this is jsn all over again all i'm saying is there's a lot of competition and there's not as clear of a path to a 25 plus percent target share as there is for a marvin and a malik uh in this rookie class yeah look i completely agree when it comes down to rama dunes i hear the guy that i did want to talk about is chris alave sure um You know, I bought a video saying that you guys should be cashing in on Chris Olave because respectfully, what has he done? Um, If you look at the past two years, you know, in his rookie year, 2022, 13.2 fancy points per game, finished as a wide receiver, 25 on a points per game. This past year, obviously dealt with some injuries, 14.5, finished as a wide receiver, 19. Once again, projecting really similar. Is that per game or season finish? Uh, Fantasy, the points per game. 
points per game. Okay, cool. Yeah, I point, just want to make sure I'm yeah. doing it right. No, no, no. Yeah, points per game. The talent's there. This situation is terrible. And I think that was kind of the same conversation we were having with Drake London the past two years. And it's not getting better. We see are seeing the shift with Drake London currently, obviously with Kirk Cousins, even without even seeing Kirk Cousins on the field. But Derek Carr is on the books here until 2027, 2028, if I'm not mistaken. They yeah. do have an out in 26, but that's a $28 million cap hit. We've seen teams come off of quarterbacks like that with Russell Wilson, sure. obviously. But the situation is not getting better. I'm not sure if I'm a new team, if I'm if I'm doing a dynasty startup and I'm really deep into fantasy football, if Chris Olave is somebody I'm willing to, you know, pay a, t- a top four pick in a dynasty startup or pay okay. an early first round pick. If I'm trying to trade for him or a mid first round pick, I'm not, I'm not for it right now. I'm, I'm really against it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Talk, talk to me about Chris I, Olave, how you feel. I'm still in, but I think he's a good pivot down. I, I am still in on buying him at his okay. price, but I also would be open to pivoting down to a couple other names that we'll talk about if it if it nets me a first round pick somehow. But okay. anytime you got a guy who has Chris Olave's talent and his draft capital yeah, and his him. target market share, mm-hmm. then it's hard to deny a player like that, right? Twenty six percent of the target share as a rookie, twenty five percent last year and he dealt with injuries. I have him projected to hit twenty seven percent of the target share this year. And no Michael one came in. Thomas like, Sorry, no one, no one's come in to complete with him. So I, I agree. I'll uh, continue. Like the, you know, they yeah. get rid of Michael Thomas. They don't, they don't like bring in. Like remember, we were saying Roman Dunze. Imagine if he went to the the Saints. What is that going to mm-hmm. look like? But that clearly didn't happen. Chris Lobby is clearly number one still. Yeah, he's the number one, and I'm playing it similar to how we played. I guess DJ Moore as a community. Always a talented player, okay. always a okay. high percentage of the target share. Mm-hmm. You just have to be patient and wait for the right situation to happen, right? Uh, those people who waited on DJ Moore to get out of Carolina were in the right situation. I mean, those people who waited on Drake London to get a new quarterback played it the right way. At the end of the day, we know he's a talented player, has a draft yeah. capital, has yeah. earned the targets in the NFL. I'm willing to wait on him still, even though the quarterback play isn't quite there just yet. Yeah, look, I agree. I mean, you think of wide receivers and and this may sound crazy like i've been off of jalen waddle as well but i would rather pivot to Jalen waddle wide receiver 10 in the community chris olivia wide receiver 11 he's an older prospect but he's wide receiver too but what's the difference okay i'd rather have olave there Uh, but for me it's like what's the difference that he has the quarterback and we've seen Jalen waddle you know i feel like what Jalen waddle has done even with tyreek hill is still I don't have his numbers in front of me, but it still feels better than what Chris Olave has done. Now, maybe the numbers sure. will say differently, but just bringing a hypothetical there, obviously Waddle is not going to be on this okay. list. He's over 25 um, or over, yep. uh, you know. So anyways, take us to your next tier there. Just a conversation, by the way, guys. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, before we get into tier four, I just want to let you guys know that if you want your dynasty team reviewed by Badaki and myself, it's very simple. All you got to do is become a Mother Flocker member with the promo code LAND. Maybe you have some of these names and you don't know who to tear down or tear up to. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have draft picks and you're not sure what to do with them. If you're a contender, if you're a rebuilder, we can help you figure all that out on a live stream. Uh, Again, become a mother flocker member with the promo code land. Check out the pinned comment. But here in tier four, this is my largest tier. Okay. And it's a lot of names that I feel very good about building around in Dynasty. Tank Dell, Zay Flowers, Brian Thomas Jr., Jordan Addison, George Pickens, uh, Lad McConkie, and Jackson Smith in Jigba. Okay. You know, I actually believe that Tank Dell is deserving of being in his own tier. I probably should have played it out that way, but for the sake of the <laughs> graphic, I don't have him in that tier. Sure. Uh, but I do think Tank Dell kind of stands apart, but he's not as valuable as the names in tier three, in my personal opinion. Like, I can't put him in tier three and say he's as valuable as a Drake London or an Alave or an Adunze because I don't believe that to be true. But I do think he is clearly the most valuable name out of anyone in Tier 4. So that's just a little side note. I do think he is deserving of some more respect. But for the sake of the graphic, I agree. I, I put him in <laughs> Tier 4. Yeah, I love that because I do the graphics here. <laughs> um, yeah. But are, are you putting Tank Dell here because not only the talent, but because of the quarterback play? Because I think there's a, a, a significant tier up when it comes down to the quarterback play versus everyone in this tier. Is that kind of why you have him there as well with the obviously – what, how he finished and what he was doing in the second half of the season? 
Yeah, I mean, I have him there because of what he showed on the field. Yeah. And really, that's that's the main reason. I guess, yes, t- um, he is connected to C.J. Stroud long-term. That's very enticing when you think about, you know, what happens when Stefan Diggs is gone. But average 15 points per game as a rookie. And some of those games, he wasn't even, like, the starter. You know, if you look mm-hmm. at when he was mm-hmm. the starter onwards, it's much higher than 15 points per game. So anytime you go out and you can produce year one and you're attached to a young name like CJ Stroud, sure. I'm definitely going to be very interested in you. Now you and I heavily disagree on what Stefan Diggs's role will be in this offense. Mm-hmm. I think he has just as much of a right to the wide receiver one target share as any other name. And that's why ultimately I can't just put tank Dell in tier three because of what he's done in his rookie in his rookie year, because we know each year, values change for people in, sure. in their mind. So sure. uh, I do think Diggs is going to play a role. I think there's a reason they brought him in. And I do think I can't spin it as like a positive for Tank Dell. Do you know what I mean? No, look, that, that makes sense there. I think, yeah, look, that makes sense. I think we can go to do a whole debate there with Tank Dell and Stephon Diggs here. Um, or somebody that I did want to talk about here is George Pickens. Um, yeah. Because... I think he's a phenomenal. It's a yeah, it's a tough name. Phenomenal value currently right now in the community wide receiver twenty four, um, around the likes of you know Tank Dell, Jackson Smith, and Jigba that you have here. He's ahead of Jordan Addison. Yeah, the quarterback situation I think is eerily similar when it does come down to what I've talked about. Chris Olave is this going to be another quarterback carousel? Obviously, the talent's yeah. different, but you know Russell Wilson's there. Justin Fields is there. There's just a lot of uncertainty, and we love what we saw this past year. You know, I mean, mm. and that was with an even worse quarterback here. So, yes, I, I, this is a make or break year for George Pickens for me. I absolutely agree. I've been saying that make or break. Mm-hmm. So, in in a sense, there is some concern that there is maybe volatility around George Pickens in the in the market from this time to this time next year. Mm-hmm. You know, 16% target share as a rookie, 22% as a sophomore player. Now Deontay Johnson is gone. I have him projected to get 25% of the targets. But, you know, 20% of the targets in Houston is worth much more than 25% of the targets in Pittsburgh. Not all targets are equal because not all quarterback is equal. I think he has earned his way into being an alpha for this team this year. But I would not be surprised if, It's just not exactly clicking or, you know, the quarterback play and him aren't aligned. Remember, there are certain quarterbacks we have seen George Pickens not link up with very well. And he has very, very vocally on the sidelines shown who he wants to play (laughs) with. Is that going to be Justin Fields? Is that going to be Russell Wilson? No disrespect to Justin Fields, but I'm not sure that he excites me when I think about George Pickens and his future if Justin Fields ends up being the guy there. Mm -hmm. Um, And last thing I'll say is, I don't know that Arthur Smith excites me either. Um, The one guy who we feel has misused his stars more than any other coach in the last couple of years. So I don't know, like would it surprise anyone if Darnell Washington leads this team in receiving touchdowns, something stupid like that. Roman Wilson, just a rookie taking over. I think it's a real make or break year because I could see a scenario in which, oh wow, George Pickens is like a locked and loaded top 15 wide receiver in dynasty rankings after what he did in 2024 but i could also see a scenario in which ah didn't work they might be in the wide receiver market sure. we've already heard them kind of poking around around iuk so he's just a super volatile name at this point but a player that i've always been in love with from a pure talent perspective you know that famous quote pablo picasso was born to paint george pickens was born <laughs> to play wide receiver exactly but it's just I don't know how much I love the situation around it. And let me ask you this, because you have George Pickens ahead of Vlad and Jackson Smith. Is, Josh, is that just because they're in the same tier, or would you take George Pickens over both of those guys currently? No, that's actually probably a um, uh, a missight on, on myself. I probably would take Ladd over George Pickens, but the concern is that Pickens has already established himself as number one. Sure. Could I be missing out on that ceiling? If I look at those three names and say who has the highest ceiling, I think Pickens this year might be the name. Um, but I think they're all very, very closely valued, in my opinion. Okay, that's fair. All right. Um, tier five. Yes, tier five. Um, Rasheed Rice is in this tier, Xavier Worthy, and then Jaden Reed. And I wish I knew what was going on with Rasheed Rice. I mean, there are now reports that maybe this doesn't even get resolved it, this year. Maybe Exactly. It's, 
an Alvin Kamara situation where in 2025 we figure out what's going on with Rasheed Rice illegally, which means he probably would be able to play, play yeah. the entire season. But I've said this from day one. It's my personal opinion that if Rasheed Rice were to play every single game, he would be the favorite in target share compared to Xavier Worthy. Now, let's say Rasheed Rice is suspended six games. I don't really know what it will be. Right. I, I don't think that that means that Rasheed Rice, when he comes back, is automatically like the number two and behind Xavier Worthy. I think Xavier Worthy is going to have to establish himself big time. So ultimately, I think they should be valued right around each other is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, look, that's fair. And I think that's my main concern if Rasheed Rice does miss him games because that gives, you know, Xavier Worthy has to make most of those opportunities. And it's all going to come down to what he does in hypothetically those games that he is going, Rasheed Rice is going to yeah. miss. If we're telling you right, if, you know, if I were to tell you right now, you, Zach, specifically, if those six games, Xavier Worthy is a top 20 wide receiver averaging maybe 12 and a half fantasy points per game, and you can just see well, how he wouldn't, he, be, he wouldn't be top sure. 20 if he was I, I, I guess I guess basically what I'm trying to say is, I guess, if, forget about the 12 points per game. You can just see him every single week improving and becoming the favorite targets for uh, over potentially Rasheed Rice, that changes. That's going to change your outlook. It would definitely concern me if, as a Rasheed Rice owner, but it wouldn't say to me, "Well, Rasheed Rice is dead now," because sure. we already have Rasheed Rice as the number one wide receiver outside of Kelsey leading this team to a Super Bowl win. Mm-hmm. So I don't think he's just going to fall by the wayside after the rookie season that he had—a historic rookie season for a Chiefs rookie wide receiver. Um, I would be shocked if Worthy is a top 20 name in the first five weeks. I'll I'll hold my hand up and say I'm wrong, but I think Hollywood Brown is probably the name I would say has a better chance of being that person. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. when you consider Hollywood's been in the you know in the league a while, he knows sure. what he's doing. And then also Travis Kelsey on there. So if you're telling me Worthy is a top 20 finish in the first five weeks, then he probably is set up to be a superstar. So I'd have yeah. to adjust expectations. Maybe, maybe. The currently right now, Rasheed Rice in the community, wide receiver 34, Xavier Worthy, wide receiver 28. So obviously the price for Rasheed is on is on the edge for Rasheed Rice. Um, I don't if, think there should be that big of a gap. I think there's still uncertainty. I think that's why there is a big gap. Um, and and yeah, let me just say this. Let me just say this in favor of Rasheed Rice. I don't. I'm not necessarily sure when we've seen somebody do something wrong in public and then come out and apologize and then actually be seen in public doing some good stuff. And maybe that's because of PR stunts. But <laughs> shout out. Like, is this is this? Um, are you being <laughs> genuine right now? Or are you are you having a stab? Because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to take – look, look, Rasheed Rice, I love you. It's going to take more than a couple Domino's pizzas to repair I agree. your public figure. But tell part. me another okay. person who's done something bad, and then you know what? Let me just go put my face in public doing something good. I don't think we've seen that. Hey, just b- <laughs> give me some Papa John's pizza. You want some Papa John's? Go, all right? You, want some you broke the law? Yeah. Where's the pizza at for the community? The PR right? team is like, hey, man, just, just go to Papa John's, hand out some – yeah, buy, buy, buy some pizzas for the community here. Um, <laughs> and quickly, Jaden Reed, before we go on to our next tier here. You have him in this tier. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you might have somebody else in later tiers, whether that is, yes. um, you know, look at the likes of Wicks or Christian Watson won't be on the tier because he's 25, I guess. Um, or maybe he will be on the tier because he's 25 and under. But mm-hmm. um, Jaden Reed is somebody we saw break out this past year wide receiver 30 in the community. You clearly still feel more confident in him over some of these other players. Am I correct? Or so, you just love the other per- people's values more? I like Reed. I just uh, The concern around any Packers wide receiver is can we sustain that level of um, touchdown efficiency, if you will? Like Packers wide receivers scored touchdowns at a unsustainable rate last year. And that is, that is a little bit concerning. The touchdowns really propped up their fantasy value. Whereas the target share is, is what really is a red flag for any Packers wide receiver. Jaden Reed last year was, you know, the guy to own. He had 17% of the target share. Mm -hmm. I mean, very rarely does a guy who is under 20% of the target share win you a fantasy league. 
I have him sat it out for 19% of the target share right here, right now. Christian or uh, Jane Reed, that is barely at a thousand yards. So I do think he takes another step. But Jane Reed is a name that carries a lot of, well, just question marks, quite frankly, okay. because we know the numbers weren't great when Christian Watson was healthy. We know there are other names on this team that are deserving of demanding targets. And we know that this team scored touchdowns at a ridiculous rate last year. So, yeah, there's just a lot of concern around, around his name. Talented player, but he is a more difficult picture to paint than some of the names in Tier 4. Sure. And that's fair. That's fair. All right, take us to your Tier 6. Tier 6, Ricky Pearsall, Keon Coleman, Xavier Leggett. Just all the names that, you know, a lot of people are excited about. Ricky, Xavier go in round one. Leggett, it's, you know, is this the next great bust in round one? No. Because Not of his all. concern as a route runner. Well, <laughs> he was selected in round one. Uh -huh. Canales uh -huh. knows what he's doing with an offense. I'll bet on Leggett there. As far as Keon Coleman goes, a lot of people will tell me I have him way too low in these rankings. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't believe that just because he was drafted by Buffalo means he's the number one wide receiver on their team. Agreed. I still think there is a long journey ahead of him to improve as a route runner um, because it's different gravy when, when you're going up against a defensive backfield rather than, you know, college. So I still think his red flags are something we should be concerned about. And then Slick Ricky Pearsall, it's wheels up when one of those names get traded, Ayuk or Debo. One of those names are gone, it is wheels up for Slick Ricky. But right now, there's a good chance Ricky is the number four option, number five option on an offense, Yeah. right? CMC, CMC Debo, Ayuk, yeah. Kittle. Is he fifth as a rookie? How do you really project that moving forward? Yeah. But I think he's a superior talent to Keon, so long-term, I'm going to ride with him over the likes of a Keon Coleman. Yeah, there's upside for each and every for each of these players in tier six, like you said, once one of those guys are gone for Ricky wheels up, if Keon Coleman does become and, and really take over these 140 targets from Stefan Diggs, which I think we both can agree. We doubt that he would do that. That's exciting. Yeah. Okay. That's like, okay. We, we didn't see that coming. And Xavier, the get, like you said, with Dave Canellis there, does he become the Mike Evans of that offense and become the big body wide receiver that he can be? as he improves going into the next couple of years there. So I agree with tier six. Love all these guys here. Take us to your last tier. Yeah, well, the last tier is honestly just like a huge combination of a bunch of different names. So I know there will be comments of like, how did you leave this guy out? You know, wh mm -hmm. where the hell is this player? This is more just like generalized names that I think are worthy of, of being discussed. And the list goes beyond these names. It's just only so many names can fit on the graphic. But sure. these are guys fighting for a spot in the top 25. Jalen Polk, Christian Watson, Jermaine Burton, Jameson Williams, Dontavion Wicks, who, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a Wicks guy. I know you're not, but we'll have a conversation there. Troy Franklin and Adonai Mitchell. You can add Josh Downs. You can add Jahan Dotson, Roman Wilson, Malachi Corley. You know, the list can sure. be much larger than it is here on the graphic. It's just we can only fit so many names. All right, let's talk about, you know, this Green Bay wide receiver because I know you kind of mentioned that I'm not a big uh -huh. Dontavian Wicks guy. And it's not that – let me just say this. I think the talent's there. I think there's a lot of hurdles he has to go through, and there's a lot of caveats, which I think it's pretty fair that the pathway could be there if Watson goes down, if – Reed goes down and we saw what he did in the second half of the season there mm -hmm. where, you know, the last three games against Tampa, Carolina and Chicago. I mean, he was getting over over 12, 10 fantasy points in those last three games. But once again, Christian Watson wasn't on the field. And when Christian Watson was on the field, he was non-existent. I think that sure. is my biggest concern. And I, I get everyone's conversation about Don, around Tom Tavion Wicks because he probably just looked like the better talent when he was on the field. I get it. You know, he probably earned himself to some to some of those things. But if the Packers still believe in Christian Watson, if Christian Watson could play a full season or even 10 games, I, mean, I think he played eight games this past year. If he can play 10 to 12 games, 
where does Wicks fit into this offense? And I think that is the hardest part for me to envision. I'm happy to take him as a late flyer, but I think the community right now is continuing, continuously bumping him up because, you know, they're seeing the conversations around him, which I get. And it's, 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 it's swaying me, but I'm just like, I just think I believe more in, in Christian Watson wide receiver 53 in the community right now. I would say that's, that's pretty high. What Wicks? Yeah, you're saying Watson is that Wicks? That's what. Yeah, that's Wicks. Wide receiver fifty three okay. on keep trade cut right now. Sure. I mean, I guess it's not that high where his lowest was wide receiver sixty in the middle of May. So I guess it's not that big of a jump if you that really think seem about crazy it. To me, no, 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 because that's only a seven a seven spot different. But once again, as we get closer to the season, does he get bumped up even more? Um, cause we're still probably, uh, he probably should. Uh, I mean, look, I you, you keep, you, you keep saying that Christian Watson's like, if Christian Watson is healthy in your mind, he's automatically the number two or number one on this team. I think he's number one I, if he stays healthy, no doubt in my mind. Okay. I just don't agree whatsoever because okay. Dontavion Wicks in every part of playing the wide receiver position is better than Christian Watson as a route runner. He is far superior working in offense over the middle of the field. He is far superior than Christian Watson is. The only thing Christian Watson does better than Dontavion Wicks is what God gave him, his body, his athlete, his athleticism. Mm-hmm. That is the only thing Christian Watson does better than Dontavion Wicks on the football field. Even Yak. I mean, you can give Yak to Watson, but Dontavion Wicks is a very good Yak player. So, yeah, I get it. Christian Watson has a draft capital. He hasn't been able to stay healthy. That's why Wicks had an opportunity but guess what? If like a player keeps showing you that he's really good on the field, you're going to keep finding ways to get him on the field. And if a player continually lets you down based off where you drafted him, eventually you might have to start making some difficult decisions. But if you look at his success versus a man, far superior than Christian Watson. Success versus zone, far superior than Christian yeah. Watson. His route tree as a whole, it's it's not, it, we're not even in the same stratosphere when we talk about these two players. So I think, in, in, in yeah. my personal opinion, I think ultimately the better player wins out over the long run. And you can just add on top there that Christian Watson has all these injury concerns that he's potentially dealt with. But I don't think it's crazy at all to say that Dontavion Wicks and Christian Watson could see a similar target share in 2024. The reason why I'm, I'm hesitant on the target share specifically was because I, once Christian Watson was on the field, he automatically became the guy even over Jaden Reed. And I think that's what is hesitant for me with Dontavion Wicks. If you look at the three games that he was healthy, and obviously maybe we can end with this, right? Look at the three games that he went, he came back. I mean, four, okay, obviously four targets and then seven targets and nine targets. And then, I mean, the, the production was there and he was the guy leading that team now. And I think that's what puts the weight on the team still believing in him. Now, I get all those caveats of him, the injuries, and Dontavion Wicks and him being more successful on man and on press. I understand that. But I think I'm seeing what I'm seeing according to the stats is that when Christian Watson's healthy, according to Green Bay, they want to give they want to get him the ball. Um, Now, that can definitely change going into this year. I don't think that's projecting farther, further into the future enough because, yes, that was the case. But then (laughs) Dontavion Wicks stepped onto the field. And because he was injured, <laughs> because he was injured, it doesn't matter. Like exactly. And who was the better wide receiver? I think it was Dontavion Wicks just because someone was injured. And then this other player dominates. Okay. Let's just put that genie back into the, into the box. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I just don't think it works like, like that personally. I, I, and, um, and I'm not saying cause the, my other take Christian Watson out of it. Then I still believe Jaden Reed is number one. Then sure. Right, and then Dontavion Wicks will be rankings. will be number two, which is great. A lot of people, what I don't agree with, is that Dontavion Wicks, and I'm not saying you're saying this in the in the community. Dontavion Wicks is easily the number one wide receiver on this team. No one's saying that though. I, I've seen that multiple times in in our in our maybe not saying the number one wide I receiver. Think... I guess what they're saying, and, and I'll I'll correct myself. What they're saying, he's the most talented wide receiver on this team. Mm. And they... I'll speak for the the Wicks community. None mm-hmm. of us are saying he's the most talented player on this team. Clearly, I don't think feel that way. Well, we, we've seen that here. multiple times in, in the comments. 
Okay, I haven't seen that. Maybe okay. I'm not. Maybe I'm just not looking in the right areas. Okay. But what I believe the consensus is from the Wix community is mm-hmm. Reed is clearly the number one on this team. If we had to make a bet here right now today, right. but after that, it's a complete free for all of who is the number two on this team. And a lot of people feel like Dontavian Wicks is the most talented of those names. Okay. Um, a lot of people actually think Dobbs could could be that guy because of his, yeah, his people, efficiency people in the red Dobbs. zone. Yeah, hundred percent. But no, I don't. I don't want to speak for every Wicks believer, but I don't think any of us are saying, yeah, he's the number one or he's the sure. most talented. It's sure. no, he could be the number two pretty easily on this team. And, and I understand that's is what's so difficult about this Green Bay, you know, wide receiver room. Um. So it's interesting. Comment down below. I think we're going to see a lot more Wix believers and Christian Watson believers in the comments. But I still um, like Christian Watson, but it's just like you have to buy Christian Watson at a price that you don't have to buy Wix at. And I agree. And I agree. Like the price for Wix is, is exciting to where you can buy him. And if he doesn't become the guy that we thought, what did you pay for him? But once again, yeah. I don't think that's going to be the price in hypothetically dynasty startups when a lot of people do startups maybe in August or even in in your your fantasy leagues, I think Wix yeah. is going to skyrocket and then maybe we're overdrafting him and we're saying, well, uh, well, I mean, Christian Watson potentially stayed healthy for the majority of the I season, mean, you know. If that happens, we can address it then, but it's not <laughs> happening now. Yeah, it's not happening now, exactly. So um, I agree. I understand. I understand the conversations around around Dontavion Wicks, but um, just wanted to bring my two cents there. Yeah, I get it. Um, like I said, I feel like the Wicks hype is warranted, um, and it's also got the stamp of approval by some of the brightest minds in the industry. So mm-hmm. I think it's time to get on board, man. I don't. I don't want you to be left at the station. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be there by myself, and I'll be like, okay, I'll hop on the next train. Uh, but that is it for today guys we appreciate you big time hit the like button subscribe and we'll see you in the next one all love now that those idiots are done talking who needs some rankings hell yeah I need some rankings then use promo code LAND L-A-N-D for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com oh it's so easy even your grandma could scan that QR code right there